Good morning, friends. I trust that you are all well. We want to thank the Lord for a gift of another day. And we want to thank him for protecting us. Um, we want to thank him for the fact that he has brought us. May his name be glorified. This week, we have been looking at our key text is from First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. And uh, our theme for this week has been that thou wouldest bless me indeed. Yesterday, we looked at blessings indeed versus imaginary blessings. And uh, the first imaginary blessing that we looked at was um, self-righteousness, where we considered a text from Luke 18, chapter 11, of the Pharisee who was in the temple. And when he saw the publican, he, he spoke to himself, thanking God for himself and thanking God that he, he's not for, for the fact that he's not like other men who are adulterers, who are unjust. Self-righteousness. He was praising himself. He had false assurance, but his faith was not rooted. His faith was not firmly rooted in Christ, which was not a good thing for him. And so he said, our faith has to be rooted only and in only Christ. Our own self-righteousness is not enough unless we are rooted in Christ, unless we take on the righteousness of Christ and we are dressed in him and we root ourselves in him, we cannot be saved. And so today, friends, we are going to continue with a very discussion and we look at something quite interesting it is going to be more like a, continu a continuation of blessings indeed, uh, verse imaginary blessings. Our key text again is from the book of First Chronicles, chapter 4, verse 10. Allow me to read it. He says that, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my cost. And that my, thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. And so today we are going to be looking at imaginary blessings to the saved. Imaginary blessings to the saved. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this morning, O oh Lord. Thank you for our lives. Thank you for sustaining us, and thank you for providing for us. Thank you for putting us the hunger and the thirst for your word to know you more. This morning, as we study from your word, Father, speak to us and speak through me, O oh Lord, that we may all be blessed through his study. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Imaginary blessings to themselves. Even people who have been saved might have some imaginary blessings, the things which we think are blessings indeed, but when actually in their true sense, they are not blessings indeed. The things which we might end up having in our lives, but when actually in their true sense, it wouldn't be right that we had those things. There are some prayers we may make of God. There are things we may ask and request a Lord to do for us, but actually, in the true sense, when those things may not be good for us. Answered prayer. It is very surely a blessing for you to get an answer to your prayer. We all want that. But sometimes it is very important that as we pray, we qualify our prayers with what is in Matthew 26, 39. Not as I will, but as you will will, Lord. Sometimes it is very important that by the end of the day, as we are submitting our petitions to the Lord in prayer, we should submit to his will as well. So that by the end of the day, it is not our will, but his that is being done. But sometimes we don't qualify our prayers with this. And we always want the same way I have prayed for it is the same way God should give it to me. And sometimes our prayers can really be dishonest. And we want God to help us the same way we want it to be, not submitting to his will. So it's very important that God not only answers our prayers, but he answers them according to his will and for our good. 
because otherwise we might ask for things which might be dangerous for us if we received them. And God might end up giving it in anger. And yes, we might feel a little sweetness and enjoying that thing in the beginning, but in the end, it causes us great harm. You remember the Israel of God, when they were in the wilderness, on their way to the promised land, they asked for meat. God was providing for them sufficient food every day that they ate from heaven. They didn't dig, they didn't do any work. God provided for them food every day. But there arose some from them who said, no, we need meat. We, in Egypt, we ate meat, we ate fish, we ate well. But look here, we only eat these things that fall from heaven every day. We need meat. It caused up a lot of conflict and disagreements in the camp and in their Midst. And it vexed the servants of God who are Midst them. And the Lord himself was not happy with them. And as I continued pestering their leaders asking for the meat, indeed the Lord gave them quails and they ate them and they were sweet in their tummies. But in the end, it was not a real blessing because some of them gave up because of it. Some of them died because of it. That which they had asked for thinking it was a blessing indeed, ended up being a distraction to some of them and they lost their lives until they repented and realized their error and came back to the Lord, came back to their senses. The Lord provided a remedy. It was a blessing that they got an answer to their prayer and getting the meat, the quails they asked for. But it was not a blessing indeed. Oh, that the Lord may bless us indeed. There is an old story which is told of an old woman this woman had a little child and the child was sick. And so she called for a minister to come and pray for this sick child. And the minister came to pray. And the woman said, please pray that my child may be saved. My only child may be saved. And the minister prayed. But after he prayed, he said, if it be your will, O oh Lord, save this child. And the woman was not happy with the minister. She said, I cannot bear you pray like that. How do you say if it is his will, then my child should live? I want my child to live no matter what. I must have you pray that this child should live or you walk out of this house. And the minister said, woman, it may be you. It may, it may be well that I pray that the Lord's will be done. Otherwise, this child may grow up and you regret the day you set your eyes on this child. But if it is God's will, let this child live. They said 20 years afterwards, this, the, young, the boy had grown and he had become a youth and he was convicted for a crime and he was sentenced to death. And the old woman on hearing that the child had been sentenced to death because of the crime he had committed, fainted and died. If she had listened to the words of the minister, submitting to the will of God, maybe the Lord would have taken this child when it was young, saving the woman future trouble. But when the child grew up, became a problem to the society and the woman. And even the woman's life went because of this child and the child was even sex indeed. Sometimes the things we think are blessings are not blessings indeed. Sometimes we may ask God of certain things and he will give them to us, but they are not blessings indeed. That the Lord would bless us indeed. Excitement of the spirit. Sometimes as Christians, we get over excited. We get a lot of religious joy and we think it is a blessing. We delight in it when we go for prayer meetings. And indeed it's a blessing we should be thankful for. 
But sometimes what excites us so much and the things that we enjoy so much and we sometimes think it is God's will and God's favor for us may not be blessings indeed. And sometimes like spiritual excitements may not be indeed signs of God's true blessing. Perhaps it would be better if we were broken in spirit and lay low before the Lord in the present time than be excited for nothing. Maybe it would be better for us to be at our laws, for us to be sad and for us to suffer want and need. But when we have the Lord, then be excited and be happy and be in high spirits when we have not the Lord with us. When we ask for the highest joy and pray to be on the mountain with Christ, remember it may be much better indeed if you are in the valley of humiliation, but when you are there with Christ, it would be better for you to cry out in anguish, Lord save or I perish than be boastful and proud. It is better to lie down in the valley when you are with Christ and look to him for help and for him to save you than be on the mountain when you're not with him. It is better friends to suffer want and to suffer lack and you look to the Lord for salvation and for help than to have it all and you have not the Lord with you and you forget him. It is better friends for you to have those low grades and you remember the name of the Lord than have the high grades and you forget him. It is better friends for you to be single and not married than be married and the marriage turns out to be a hell to you, fighting every day, violence every day, and you end up getting a divorce, bring shame to the name of the Lord. It is better friends for you to remain single when you're with the Lord than get married and marry, than get married marrying that unconverted spouse. that we may be blessed indeed, that we may have the real peace that comes from our Lord, that the doubts that we have in us may be filled, that we rather suffer want when we are with the Lord than have it all when the Lord is not in our lives, that we may be blessed indeed. We better go to heaven half maimed than go marching with confidence to hell. We better go to heaven broken than go marching with confidence to hell. Because sometimes the things we consider blessings in this life are not blessings indeed. That the Lord may give us the right blessings, that the Lord may give us the true blessings, that we'd be confronted by the truth of his word daily and we surrender to his will that he may answer our prayers, not just for our good, but for his will as well. And that true, that the true, the two might always be in alignment. That we would pray that Christ may give us his true peace, his right peace. Because sometimes what we consider as peace in our daily lives is not peace at all. Peace without Christ is not peace. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world then lose his life? It matters not how happy you are in this life if you end up losing your life, friends. Sometimes we have given our time and attention to chasing the pleasures of this world and the peace of this world and the comfort of this world. But we are not blessed indeed. Rather suffer want and lack when we are with the Lord. The peace of the world is not peace at all. And those pleasures and the blessings which the world offers are not blessings at all. Oh, that the Lord may open our eyes, that we may submit to him and be blessed indeed. That our peace may be established in Christ, that our well-beings may be established in Christ. That the Lord may establish that which we do, establish our faith, establish our lives, 
establish how we go about everything, that we may be rooted and anchored in him, that we may be blessed indeed. You the Sabbath school teacher, you the literature evangelist, you the digital evangelist, you the local preacher, whatever it is you're doing, dear brother or sister, whatever form of service you are involved in, do ask the Lord to use, to give you his own material. That it may be last, that it may be strong indeed, that it may be built on the maybe build on the firm foundation of his word and his truth. Because no amount of materials that we can use as human beings will be strong if we don't have the Lord in them. Build on weak foundations that the slight change of weather that building crumbles down. At the slightest affliction, our faith crumbles down because it is not firmly rooted in Christ. But Christ may give us his own faith and his own right that no amount of harsh weather will move us, that no amount of tribulation will move us, that no amount of ill health will make us forget the name of the Lord, that no amount of poor grace will make us give up on the name of the Lord, that no amount of suffering in this life, of having no spouse in this life, to make us move away from the name of the Lord because we are rooted and anchored in him. Even if you're single, but you know I am in this with the Lord and it's his will for me and nothing will move you. And getting into a bond that the Lord does not approve of. Do that which you have to do daily and strive to be in right standing with the Lord that we may be blessed indeed, that our faith may be rooted that our Lord may be our anchor, that the Lord may be our support, that we may be built on the firm foundation of his word and his truth and his righteousness, that we may stand strong even amidst the days of tribulation and temptations, that nothing will move us, nothing will sway us, nothing will take us away from the Lord. What can separate us from the, name, from the love of the Lord? Is it trials? Is it tribulations? If we anchor ourselves deep in him, friends, nothing will move us. May the Lord bless us, a faith that will last, a faith that will stand strong amidst the temptations and the trials that come by our lives. May we be blessed indeed. Thank you, friends, for listening in. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you for speaking to us through your word, the Lord. Imaginary blessings, the Lord. Sometimes we ask for things, but when they are not really right for us, that you may teach us to align what we want with your will, that you may teach us to submit to your will always, O oh Lord, and to surrender at the feet of the cross. But not ours, but your will be done always in our lives, that in our prayer, you teach us to be humble and to submit to you and look to, look to you and you alone, O oh Lord that we may learn to put aside that what we think is good for us and surrender and submit to your workings in our lives, Holy Father. That our faith may be rooted in you, O Lord, that nothing will move us. No amount of trials and tribulations will move us if we are rooted in you, O Lord. Help us break loose from those which have been holding us back and taking us away from you. If there are relationships, if there are people, if there are things in our lives, things we hold dearly, people we cherish so much in our lives, but they have been taking us away from you. Help us break loose from all these things that we may be made whole. Bless us today and as we usher in the Sabbath this evening, that your blessing will be upon us, O Lord, that we may be revived again. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.